In the comment section of one of my previous videos, someone suggested that I try earth batteries. Well, an earth battery is when you take two dissimilar metals and you stick them in the ground and just the natural electrolytes and the moisture in the dirt cause a reaction between them and you get a small battery. Usually the voltage for the cell isn't too bad. It could be one volt, maybe a volt and a half, or maybe even up to two volts. But they're usually a pretty weak battery. But the thing is, they'll last a long time, years and years. You know, people have been doing this for ages. I played around with this a little bit, maybe 30 years ago. And in this video, I'm going to show you what my version is. From my past experiments, what I found that gave me the best voltage was magnesium and carbon. Now the magnesium is just a magnesium, it's an anode rod for a water heater. This one is, it's 40, 44 and 3 eighths inches long and 3 quarter inches in diameter. That was about oh, $19. And what I'm using for carbon are these carbon block filter, water filters. And they have to be, they have different kinds of them. You don't want the granular ones. You want the ones that are solid. The granular ones have a much higher resistance. These conduct better. And these were about, um, I think it was $9 for two. I just got this stuff. I have some stuff from before, but I just purchased some new stuff. And what I'm doing over here because I live in a cold climate, I want to get below the frost line. So I got to dig down at least four feet here. I'll probably still put some styrofoam over it, but I'm going to lay this stuff down horizontal. I'm not going to, it's not going to be vertical. I'm going to put it horizontal so the, all of it will be below the frost line. And I also want to use this for future experiments just for a grounding point. So I got a little bit more work to do here. I got a few days of opportunity where it's not real cold. It just, it's just before it's going to freeze up for the rest of the winter. I got a little bit of time, so I've got to work this in right now. And I'll be able to use this through the winter. Testing the pH of the dirt that I just dug out. It looks like... It's pretty close to neutral, a little bit alkali, it looks like. I have the electrodes all set up and ready to go in the ground now. This is the magnesium, this will be the negative electrode. And I drilled a couple spots along this rod to have some connection points. Because in time, this magnesium is going to corrode and deteriorate. And I wanted a couple contact points in there for a better connection. That one's ready to go in. And this is the carbon electrode. This will be the positive. These are all those water filter cartridges, carbon blocks. And I got a number of contact points along these just for a good connection. Just because they're a little bit weaker, if they break off or something, I want more than one contact point. And I already filled these up with sand, so these are ready to go in. Now I could have just set this magnesium right inside here. But because mainly I was going to use this for a grounding point in some experiments. Kind of a active grounding point that has a positive and negative. I wanted to separate these two apart. So that's why I'm doing it this way because I have other experiments in mind. Otherwise, I could have just put this magnesium right down the center of all these tubes and get good contact between the two electrodes. But with the dirt inside there, I'm thinking I should get a lot more surface area on this too. So we'll see what happens when I stick it in down there. Like I mentioned before, these earth batteries are pretty weak batteries. 
and this one isn't going to be an exception I don't think I noticed when I dug down here I got down four feet and then I ran into some sugar sand like beach sand and that doesn't make real good contact on electrodes or hold moisture quite as good either but we'll see what happens I know a lot of cases people say you just dump a lot of electrolyte around it and you'll make a good battery but I didn't want to do that I want to have them corrode that fast I wanted to longevity is what I was going for so I really don't want to put a lot of electrolytes around it I kind of want to go with what was natural well I dropped the electrodes into the trench into the hole I have them hooked up this is just some speaker wire I got one hooked onto each electrode and I was curious just to see what kind of voltage I'm getting at with it just sitting on there and it looks like just sitting on top of the dirt we're getting 1.86 volts so that's not too bad just sitting there on top of the dirt it's not real damp so I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up and try to pack it around there a little bit and then I'll take some more readings after I put a little dirt on it and tamped it down a little bit the voltage dropped I'll check the current and see what's happening there. About 2.8, 2.76 dropping. 0.5 milliamps. Slow down. So I was hoping to be a little bit more. I think I'm going to try putting some water on top of that now. And we'll see what happens. It doesn't look like it changed the voltage any. I'll wait a little bit. Now this is the voltage after I put the water on there. Threw a little more dirt on there too. I'll go ahead and check the amp draw. 63 point amps went up a little bit, up to three milliamps and dropping. I'm doing this live so I can document everything that's going on here too. So next time if I need to do something different, looks like it's staying around 3 milliamps, going up a little bit maybe. As I waited a little bit and left it on a shorted amp draw, I watched it rise up to a little over 4 milliamps. I filled it in just a little bit more. Maybe I just need to let some time go by to see what happens. It might take a while for everything to get set and get some good reactions going with anything I have done, any kind of electrolyte that's in there. About another hour has gone by and the milliamps has jumped up to 5.31. Let's see what the voltage is now. It's inching its way up to 1.8 like it was before. It set out overnight and the voltage came up a little bit more up to back up to 1.8 volts. The current came up a little bit more, a little over 6 uh, milliamps. But I knew it was going to be a weak battery, but I didn't think it was going to be quite this weak. So I'm not, I'm just not happy with the output. So I think I'm going to switch to plan B. Now plan B is adding some electrolyte into the mix. And so I'm going to find an electrolyte that's not going to corrode the magnesium so fast. So I think I'm going to go back to what I was doing with some crystal cells quite a few years ago. And try some of those chemicals on there and put that in the ground. So that means I got to dig it back up and pull that magnesium rod out so I can treat it. What I'm doing here is I'm melting some alum down. Alum is going to be the electrolyte I'm going to put on the magnesium electrode. It's a potassium aluminum sulfate. I think John Bedini is the one who came up with the idea to use this in crystal cells. 
probably like maybe 12 years ago, a bunch of guys were experimenting with them, and so was I. And I got this stuff probably about 12 years ago. So what I'm going to do is just melt this down and paint it on the magnesium electrode. I'll just use a brush. This stuff is supposed to be a little less corrosive, so the magnesium will last a little bit longer. So the earth battery is actually going to be an earth crystal battery. And we'll see what kind of power we can get out of it then. This is about melted down. Probably pretty good. I think I should shut the stove off now. It's solidifying pretty fast as I coat this on here. Hopefully I'm not going to make a too big of a mess and drip it all over the place. Yep, it's starting to drip. Maybe if I keep twirling it, maybe it won't drip off so much. And that should do it. Kind of looks like melted wax on it. I have the electrode back in the ground and since this is going to be kind of like a crystal cell too I'm going to add some of this no salt in the dirt around it also as an electrolyte. This is potassium chloride. This was used in crystal cells too along with alum. So I'm going to make this like a crystal cell in the earth. Well, I've had it in the ground now again for about, oh, almost 10 minutes. Put a little bit of water on top of it, a little more dirt. I'm not going to fill that in until I know it's working pretty decently. Uh, so far, it has kicked up the milliamps to about, we're at 25.8 milliamps. Uh, it's a lot, quite a bit better than what it was, what it was before. And voltage eh, it's probably still creeping up there about an hour later since I put some dirt over the top of the electrodes and dumped the water on it and we're up to about 40 milliamps now which isn't too bad I think I'm probably safe to go ahead and fill that in with dirt now You know, it's over 10 times the milliamps is getting with just without the electrolyte. So it's quite a bit of improvement. I think it's still establishing itself. Overnight it came up quite a bit. You know, hook up the jewel thief. So it's pretty darn bright. Just with two wires coming out of the ground, got some light. At this point, I think it's more of a crystal cell than an earth battery. The sand I have here in the ground just isn't real suitable for earth battery. There's just not enough electrolytes in it. The pH was just about neutral, so it just wasn't going to work too good that way. But it will be getting moisture from the ground, and hopefully that'll keep it going with the electrolytes I put in there for a long time. But it is providing that situation I was looking for for future experiments. Now if I wanted to connect another one just like this in series and put it in the ground, it's not going to work because they're not electrically insulated from each other. Both would be open to the environment of the ground and it just won't add up. It doesn't work that way. But since what I'm doing involves crystal cell electrolytes, I found a way to work around that that I can hook them up in series and it will work sticking them in the ground. They'll be electrically insulated from each other 
but the next one I go to hook up in series is only going to be semi open to the environment of the ground. So it does work this way and I'll show how I do that in the next coming video. So stick around and I'll see you in that one.